Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be a match between Action and Ample here on Circuit Breakers. Bottom left hand corner it is the red Zerg player Action. And in the top left it is Ample. He is a blue Terran player. These are both ASL caliber players. Got this replay from RJB. Again, search RJB TV in your YouTube search bar to find fastest map casts from somebody who loves StarCraft as much as I do. His passion is basically unlimited. All right. So anyway, here we go. ZVT here on Circuit Breakers. It's a four-player map, and I think it's going to be uh, maybe a hatch first here because it's hard to scout, right? It's a four-player map. It's pretty darn big. It takes a long time for your SUV to get anywhere. And if he can get away with a hatch first here against Terran on this map, as well as Fighting Spirit. Anyway, hit that like button. This is going to be a Patreon cast for the week of December the 10th. If you're supporting me on Patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin for at least a dollar a month, this is your cast for this week. I really appreciate it. And if you're watching this in January on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe for five days of a Brood War content every single week. Oh yeah, here we go. Yes, action. Um, da -da -da. Whoa, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Yeah, it's going to be a, a 12 hatch here. And, yep, Rack's already coming up here for the uh, Terran player Ample. SCV scouting. Hatch coming down. There it is at 12 supply. And it's going to be a, a gas before pool or a pool before gas here action. Do -do -do. Oh, he faked us out. He's like, I'm getting extractor. Just kidding. Cool. And then gas. It doesn't really matter. When you're getting them that close to each other, whatever. Irrelevant. It means you get speed a little bit faster if you get that extractor first, but eh. <laughs> Basically the same thing. Love this SCV scout from Ample. He's like, hey, we're just going to head down this way and uh, just make sure there's not a pool already done in the Zerg base because I'm not finding anything top right. And I hope it's bottom left, because if it's cross-spawn, I'm not going to be able to see the lings until they come out too soon. And I don't want to have to wall off, and I don't want to have to pull SCVs unless I really need to, obviously. And just this is why you scout. So second SCV does get lucky, finds a Zerg player. Recognizes that it's not a pool first timing based on how far along that hatch is in production. And then says, all right, cool, 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 cool. Pool finishes. Production tab says a pair of lings. Wow. And first 100 gas goes to a lair. <gasps> He's not going to have speedlings. And that's something that Ample scouted. Ample saw the timing on that lair. Said, okay, you're not going to have speedlings at all. All you're going to have are slowlings, which are actually pretty terrible. So I don't have to make too much back here by way of defense. That said, we made a couple more Zerglings, and now speed is on the way, but again, it's going to be later than it otherwise would be. This poor SCV, just running for his little SCV life. Oh, Sixlings are out. Okay, fine, Sixlings are out. They're spending a lot of their time down here trying to kill this SCV, but I mean, honestly, what else is this fast layer going to be for? It's going to be Mutalisks. You can't... You can. You can go for, like, a two-base Lurker play with this fast of a layer, but man, it's entirely unnecessary. So SCV is not even really trying to get out of here. It wants to see the timing on that second gas. If it's an early second gas, it means a lot of mutas, but his scouting is done. So we'll keep an eye on this extractor, see when it actually gets taken by the Zerg player. Got be coming in. Going for that stim for those Marines. And he's actually sending the Lings across. Okay. I mean, they're slow, but all right, speed finishing. It doesn't take that long to complete. And here we go. So the Marines are all in a line, which means they can't get surrounded. And then we're going to go ahead and throw up a supply depot here for further, further walling purposes. And if you run through this way, the Marines can still kill you. So beautiful positioning here by Ample. It's almost like he's done this a hundred million times. Back home, there is a Spire on the way. Zerglings, just at this point, uh, just scouting. They're just here to make sure that nothing from the Terran moves out that he doesn't know about. So he can feel safe to drone his absolute face off. There's your second gas. That is a little better. We're going to go for a lot of mutas. I'm going to predict at least 9, possibly 11. And then from there, obviously, it's up to the Zerg player how many more he wants to make. There's your engineering bay. 
turret timings are going to be perfect from Ample, because again, these are ASL players. It doesn't mean that they're world beaters. It doesn't mean that they're champions of StarCraft, but it means that they're capable of taking a game off of anyone in the world. One game. Any one game, they can win. Firebats in the mix here. Lings are like, well, if you're going to just leave, I guess we'll stop all mining your natural for a little bit. Okay, you're seriously committing here. Sunkins, go! <laughs> Creep colonies present. Ling's gonna try to get a wrap around here. Oh, they get a medic. That's huge! And they get two marines. Sunken does. Okay, two Sunkins finish. Alright, that was expertly handled by action. Holy smokes. He ends up picking off two Marines and a Medic, and then his Sunken's finish at just gosh darn the nick of time. And that is Ample just completely pulling back and having to go home. Even lost some mining time there, too. And the Mutas are out. Uh, two Mutas are out. <laughs> hold up, hold up. So it's four. We've got, hang on, at least three more on the way. So that's seven, and I think we're gonna have eight. Ah, I was a liar. I predicted nine. He has the gas for nine. He has the gas for 11 at this point. But he's taking a third base down to the bottom right-hand corner, which this Firebat has scouted. And he's going to actually try to kill this thing. Watch. Oh, no. No, but for real. You, okay, that's cool, I guess. You to flock. Eight of them. Saving some gas, obviously, for Hydralisks and for that Lurker Transition upgrade. I don't think the Mutas should really get anything done here at all. Uh, might get a turret, but the repair seems pretty good. Can't even... Oh, he got it. All right. Well, fine. One Mutalisk <laughs> dies, one Marine dies, and a turret dies. Both players taking some hits here, but overall, eh. Nothing too game-changing, I don't think. That is a really fast Queen's Nest. A seven-minute Queen's Nest. Probably going to be a sub-ten-minute Hive here. Loving that out of action. Honestly, the faster you get Defilers out with Dark Swarm and Plague, the better I feel about Zerg players' chances of beating a Terran. Now, let's take a look at what Apple is dealing with. Besides a Mutalisk attack that seems to be never-ending. Going for Barracks, Barracks. What other production facilities does he have? A Factory. Is that it? Hmm. Just getting plus one. We have seen multiple Elite Zerg players go for Bio in the opening, even so far as to get plus two attack and plus one armor but then transition into mech. So let's not say it's going to be bio the entire game. Also, I feel like we'd see additional, there we go, additional barracks already if we were planning on going for like a two base gajillion marine science vessel kind of a thing here. I mean, the good news is the Mutas have kind of kept the Terran player at home, but he's got Stim. He's got the range upgrade. He's going to try to kill this third base as is tradition. These Hydralisks very slowly moving across the map. That lurker aspect is just about done. And here comes th that there Terran. He's got murder on his mind, as everyone in this game does. Yeah, he's making a beeline for that third base. The natural is going to be too hard to break with three sunkens there for sure, and probably some lurkers. And again, the timings that these players have figured out, and he's going to put one on the ramp too. If he needs it, and he does, he repositions it a little bit. And then the Marines and the Medics show up, and they can't get up here without killing this egg, and they do so little damage to it because they're Marines. Can he get through? I, don't, I think he would have run up here if he could. He can't. Look how long it takes to kill an egg. It's got 10 armor on that thing. All right, so the Lurkers burrow in at the top of the ramp, and they chase him away. So beautifully, just absolutely fantastically well played there by Action. I gotta say, Action probably has a bit of an advantage in this game. He hasn't lost anything, really. He's lost a handful of lings, for sure. He hasn't lost any drones yet. His third base timing is great. His lurker timing was impeccable. His muta's got a couple SCV kills. He's got a defiler round on the way here at exactly 920 or so. And this is... My gosh. So you want to hit before Dark Swarm comes up. Because once Dark Swarm comes up, this is going to be a little more difficult to do, actually. Oh, coming from both sides, though. Nicely done. Absolutely fantastic play there from Ample. He's not going to be left in the dust here. Kills those two Lurkers. A little bit gutsy, I think, from action to put those guys there. Hey, look. We've got 11 Mutalisks. I called it. Is he actually... 
Wow, this is whittling down this count very nicely. A Siege Tank. Is it? It's not in range of the... No, the Fire Bat. Wait. Okay, yeah, the Fire Bat was the... Siege Tank was not, as it hasn't taken zero, or taken zero hits here so far. That's a bad rally. That's a free Hydralisk. Action is donating Hydras to the cause here today. The cause being, um, let the Terran player win, I guess. The Muta stacking again. Fantastic. Out of action. Couple lurkers show up. The tank is the big problem. As long as there's the tank, the static defense is going to die. The lurkers are going to die. The Mutas are trying to get rid of some of these reinforcing units. And actually, succeeding really nicely. Dude, medics? Okay, I think... The Mutas just cleared this up. Siege Tank down, Medic's down, Medic down, Medic down. And the Siege Tank that has four kills gets cleaned up too. So I think he had to commit to a few more Mutas than he wanted to at this stage of the game. He'd rather have defended with a couple Urkers and the Sunkins and droned up harder. But hey, he bought the time he needed to get some Defilers out. Consume has been researched and Dark Swarm will be available for the next time the Terran player attacks a Zerg base. Uh, third base going to get delayed. And there it is. There's your delay on the third. Uh, two SCVs in the neighborhood, both of them sniped expertly by these Mutalisks, which do not have any upgrades, which tells you there's no plan for going mass Mutalisk in this game at all. He's instead making a couple Scourge. He is getting very fast Plague. 11-minute Plague here. From the Terran side of things, he is, yeah, it's a Radiate. It's going to be Science Vessels. Science Facility is done. A second Factory coming up, though. That might be for Goliath. If he's worried about these Mutas and he wants to be able to hit them from farther away than Marines can... Goliaths are always a fantastic answer to that question. How do you kill Mutalisks from a far distance away? Uh, Goliaths. Goliaths can do that very nicely with the Charon Booster upgrade, which again, did not get introduced until Brood War came out. Because Mutalisks were crushing everything. Every matchup was Mutalisks in the original StarCraft. I remember this. Because I had original StarCraft. It was just, it was unstoppable. Mass Muta, there was no early answer to it. So in Brood War, they were like, well, crap. Uh, Corsairs? We'll give the Protoss Corsairs to deal with Mutalisks. And we will give Terran, Valkyries, and Goliaths with range. They already had Goliaths, but giving them range. And to the Zerg, they gave them Devourers. That didn't work out so well, but it definitely helped Protoss and Terran versus Mutalisks. Uh, ZVZ still in a lot of ways. Third base in a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, that's... Jeez, is he just going to lose it? Nope, the Mutas are coming down to try to save this... Save this fourth he's got coming up. But uh, there's Siege Tanks and Science Vessels and... Irradiate is done, and yeah, that's a canceled base right there. He's trying to save it, but the Irradiates are pretty good here. I don't know if he... The Mutas aren't even committing. Yeah, that's a canceled fourth. All right, fairly well, a fourth base, but guess what the third base of uh, Amples is doing here? I'm getting these names confused because they both start with A. Action and Apple. Oh, come on. You can get it. Oh, my gosh. That's not enough Marines to save the day. Okay. Well, command center down. And a couple SCVs are going to die here, too. Ouch. Down, oh, actually, 50, down to 57 SCVs for Ample. Amazing macro here on two bases. Dude, this is a sneaky ninja fourth, though, at the 12 o'clock. I'm pretty sure that action does not know about that. It's a very slow tank crawl up this ramp. That's why you have a Nidus to be able to reinforce from your main. This is pretty intense stuff coming up here from Ample. Dark Swarm, great. Plague, ooh! Oh, that was a great plague. Defiler hides in the Dark Swarm. Marines coming on down to kill some of these drones. And the Lings don't want to engage. There just aren't enough of them. Also, this cavern is almost done. That's not going to save this third. Dude, are you? All right, so the Ling's forced to engage. Is he transitioning into mech? That's a lot of vultures all of a sudden. Production tab is moderately empty here for the Terran player, too. All right, so the Mutas come in to our plagued Marines and just... Splash damage. It's not splash, it's ricochet damage, right? But every one of those Glaive Worm hits kills a Marine because they've been plagued. Alright, so the Mutas killed the tanks, but this base is dead. Macro hatch here, Vulture's here. Is he mecking? Yeah, Marines, Goliaths, tanks. Ample doing some kind of a weird hybrid strategy at this point. Can't say I disagree with it. Okay, but Lings can wreck this. You have all the turrets in the universe, but guess who's here? Zerglings are here. They're, um... 
They have Adrenal, so that means all of these turrets are dead before the units can respond. Let's see. Any of the turrets survive? I guess they're going after SCVs here, too, but... Ling's... Yeah, the learn certainly exploding sound is one of my favorites, too, in all of StarCraft. Okay, so fourth base there. Do you want to... I guess you probably want to retake... This in a better advantageous position. This has been some really nice back and forth, I gotta say. So the Mutas say, can we handle the remaining turrets here? There's an Irradiate. Split it off! Split them both off! Oh, gosh. All right. Well, dang it. Uh, that hurt. Mutas are in a lot of trouble here. Again, Mutas are not the end game strategy. It's Ultralisks, obviously, based on the upgrade patterns that we've been seeing. Caron Boosters is done for Ample. Effectively finished. More vultures show up. But look, it's marines and vultures and siege tanks. Who makes marines and vultures and siege tanks? Is this a drop? How did these guys get over here? Did they take the Nidus Canal? Look at this! The Goliath is being protected by the Dark Swarm, so the Mutas can't kill it. Okay, that's frustrating. Man, if they take down... Okay, Ling's got it. Ling's popped out of the Nidus and saved the day. Well, this is a scrap fest so far. I can't... There's no way Goliath walked over here, right? They had to have been drop shipped. But I missed it. It looks like we're going full mech at this point. We're getting mech upgrades. We're making more vultures and more tanks. Marine production has entirely stopped. Yeah, seems like the transition is coming in right now. Vulture speed. Additional base top right here. I do not like Action's chances in this game. Action Jackson. Possibly not, uh... Hell, possibly not gonna win this thing. He's down 137 to 88 total supply. Whoo, boy. And full mech on display here. See, again, the Marines have 1-1, one, one, but we're mecking now. I don't think we're going to see any more Marines in production unless... I don't know what. Unless there's a really big committal into Mutalisks. And Ample wants to be able to deal with them maybe a little bit better than the Goliaths can. Did you throw down a Plague here or a Dark Swarm? Nothing... Holding off. He's maxed out on energy. He's waiting for them to clump up. I think that's a plague. Radiate plague. Ah, not the greatest plague I've ever seen. He did catch all of the Marines. Well, most of the Marines, though. It was pretty nice. Muta's coming back home to try to save the day. But again, the irradiates on the Ultras as they come out. Another plague. Ooh, a beautiful plague. -oo. You're going to win this game, action. It's going to be some incredible Dark Swarm and plague play, to be certain. I think that drone might have killed a vulture. Nicely done, drone. You are a hero for sure. Yes, waste your bullets. Waste your bullets shooting at an ultralisk protected by the swarm. Literal bugs is what that is. Vulture run buys, and it really takes a while for vultures to kill ultras, it turns out. Bit of study on this one. Ling's Muta's rather trying to get up here, but Goliath's shutting that down. Ling's just getting obliterated by spider mines, but also clearing out the spider mine fields. So, I mean, they're performing their duty there, I gotta say. Um, this, I guess Muta's shut that down. That makes a lot of sense. How, where do these guys keep coming from? Apparently, Apple's figured out how to teleport a little bit. Part of the song. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, that ultra list down. Spider Mines, good. Spider Mines ignore armor. That is why they're good against ultras. And they're big hits, too. Big swings. Again, to kill ultras, big swings are needed. Siege tank fire. Spider mine hits. Pretty much it. <laughs> the Terran has available that does really big hits and kills Ultralisks well. 
But hey, that's why we have so many spider mines out, and that's why we're pumping out tanks two at a time. All right, so it's a four basing Zerg. Still down about 50 supply here to the Terran Ample, who's doing great things on his four bases, trying to get a fifth base in the top right-hand corner. And another base just below that. This is a little bit greedy and probably not going to happen based on the trajectory of these lings coming up to shut it down. So you might be able to hang on to this top right. Oh, dragging them away, dragging the ultras away from crushing that, allowing reinforcements time. You get up here, but guess who just got plagued? That's right, Ample's tanks did. And some of his vultures. Yeah, you're not holding a ramp against ultras with marines, dude. Especially not if they have plus five armor, working on plus six. All right, so ultras do not shut this base down. They do shut down all the mining at the base, of which there was very little. We're gonna force a lift off, so I don't know. It's a minor victory, I guess. Nothing great. Like, I don't think anything that's going to help action win this game, necessarily. Well, you know, the Ultra is doing all right overall. The Goliaths hit pretty hard, and then the tanks are the big boys. spider Mine too. tank spider Mine combo. Pretty fantastic. So this is going to be chaos. This feels Larva style to me. I don't know if Larva invented it, but it eventually kind of devolves into the point where you're just sending Lings and Ultras across the map willy-nilly, killing whatever you can find. Exploding spider mines, making sure the spider mine field never gets too big because it's constantly exploding on Zerg units. You're sacrificing Zerg bodies, but you're also not going to run your Ultralisk flock into about 15 million spider mines later in the game. It's trade offs, right? It's doing a lawn mow. Oh, Boxer Maneuver here. All right, cool stuff. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Triple Boxer Maneuver? I don't think Scourge can even do anything about this. Nope. Okay, yes. One of the science vessels goes down. Oh, coming into this 12 o'clock position, which has been threatened before, but never actually killed yet. Trying to hold... Oh, Dark Swarm. Ah, the Defiler dies before the Dark Swarm comes up. SCB full evacuation from the 12 o'clock position. Irradiate showing up. Science vessels here to save the day. For ample... And one Zergling working on a missile turret gets killed by a Vulture. All right, man. It is still I mean, 22 minutes in here, and uh, action is down 40 supply. Again, as a Zerg player, you need to be up in supply at this point to win, especially against a Mecking Terran. And this is just suicide right here. Everyone's going to die. Ready? That was the sound of everybody dying for the Zerg player. Dark Swarm and a Plague. A little bit annoying. This Zergling is a hero. Three kills on this guy inside the Dark Swarm. No one can kill him. No one can touch... Oh, he ran out of the Dark Swarm. All right, see you later, man. Are we going to repair this turret through the plague? You're trying, but it's a losing proposition, friend. Yeah, this, honestly... I uh, I feel like we've seen this game before, y'all. I don't know how this one ends, but... Uh, you just start kind of running Lings and Ultras up against the Terran and engaging them on the ground and just the tank count is too high and the Goliaths are hitting you pretty hard as well. It's got to be a drop thing. If you're going to win this thing, it comes down to dropping on bases and killing them, dropping on top of tanks, not approaching them from the ground. Even if you have Dark Swarm supporting you. Even if you have Dark Swarm supporting you, it's not going to go well. So Apple seems to know what he's doing here. He's up 179 to 128 total supply, which is just utterly problematic. Dark Swarm on the Defiler and a Plague from the Defiler. That's pretty much all you can expect from a Defiler. It's those two spells before you die. Okay, all right. Interesting. Without Marines supporting the Science Vessel, Scourge a little bit more effective. It seems like the Goliaths are prioritizing ground targets instead of the air targets there. And maybe that's what Marines do as well. But see, look, Marines do as well, but okay, all right. So Plague Tanks getting wiped out by an Ultralisk from the backside is pretty odd, actually. Uh, Ling is coming from the backside. Ultralisk largely untouched here inside the Dark Swarm. And this situation not going super well for Ample all of a sudden. I think this is the kind of a win 
that action needed if he's going to win this game. He's suddenly only down 20 supply instead of 50. That is some good numerology if you're a Zerg fan at the moment. So don't give up hope. Ling's closing the distance to a siege tank. But guess what? Friendly siege tank's on the other side. Not getting through here. Nice wall with tanks on the high ground. Again, drops. Six o'clock base taken by action, as well as these two side mineral bases. But the problem is, if you split this map in half, you're going to lose. Especially against a mecking Terran. If it was a bio Terran, maybe you can get away with it. But against a mecking Terran, okay, everybody abort and try to go for these guys. The vulture count is too high for the ultras to do anything. Or the lings to do anything, and the tank count is too high for the ultras. Again, just trying to scrap everywhere. Man, just running up again. Ah, these slings, no! Wait, hold on, they got a siege tank. Hang on, they're inside the mineral line. They have exceeded all expectations. Plus three vultures against tanks. Again, not super great. Jump on up. Don't siege up. Siege Commander, whatever you might want to do against these Lings, they will destroy you. Appropriately, Terra music is playing at the moment. Action's macro has been pretty sick, though. He's only down 10 supply right now. He needs to kill a base, and I don't... Jeez, this 12 o'clock is suddenly really enhancedly defended. Like, no. Abort mission. Do not go in there. Thank you for not going in there with everything you have, Action. Constant Spider-Man laying has just been a really strength of Ample here, I gotta say. He's been doing that very well. And finally, you notice these bases are like the last ones to be taken. It's because you can set up tanks on this high ground and shell it, and Zerg players hate taking it. So for that reason alone, Circuit Breakers is a f somewhat Terran-favored map, but I don't know. Yeah, look at this. Only down about eight supply now to Ample, despite being kind of on equal base at the moment. That is so many siege tanks, though. These are the numbers that both Terran and Zerg actively fear when it comes to siege tank count. Your Dark Swarm does not help you against 20 siege tanks. It doesn't. See, look at this Dark Swarm. Okay. Yeah, everything in there dies. Spider Mine's clearing stuff out, too. But double expanding to the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock are pretty good. If you can hold on to those, you can win this game. Even doing horrible, horrible land-based attacks into siege tanks, as we're seeing here. Okay, all right. Tank out getting whittled down just a little bit there. But again, you wander outside the Stark Swarm coverage, and these guys start getting involved in smashing you in the face with their arc light shot cannons. Why is there a drone up here? This is not the home for you. Might have got caught up in a hotkey or something. I don't know. Uh, okay. Now, this is where things can get dangerous for Ample. You got Lings and Ultras on top of your production. Right? They start killing your tanks before they get anything done as they're coming out of their factories. You start killing the factories themselves. You start killing command centers and SCVs. And this is one of the more effective just kind of run into the main base of the Terran attacks I've ever seen on this channel. I cannot believe this is succeeding on any level right now. They're taking down, they're gonna cause factories to burn down. That Dark Swarm is still there. Tank down, tank down, tank down. Ling's just pouring in from the south. Again, the macro on display here from action is incredible. He was down 50 supply, and now he's up. He's up almost 30 supply at the moment. Killing factories, forcing liftoff, forcing the production of Ample to grind to an absolute halt. He's not even lifting his buildings effectively. He's getting so run upon by these lings. Some Scourge just pick up a couple science vessels that are watching helplessly. He's down to two factory production. 
this has been one of the more impressive reversals in a game of StarCraft I have ever seen. I don't even, like, okay, all these tanks are dead. Uh, Apple's gonna be down below 100 supply here fairly soon. He was at 180 something previously. He's killing armories. That siege tank is gonna die. There's, I mean, this. <laughs> what? <laughs> Coming in? That's GG. I don't. That, no. There's no way that Apple comes back and wins this thing. This base is dead. Although the Lings and Ultras decide to spare it entirely and go after this base instead, which is equally dead. It just has two siege tanks supporting it. So this is almost like a TVP where the Heron just wipes out the Protoss main and the Terran sets up, or the Protoss sets up a base somewhere else. That's what the Terran is doing today. I know how this works. I've seen Protoss players do this all the time. Dude, this base that it's, this base being alive is nuts. Okay, it's finally going to die. Uh, it's 172 to 96 total supply. It's getting supply blocked into next week is ample here as soon as all those guys get through there. The fact that he's hanging on to these bases, especially for the gas income, is hugely important. The 12 o'clock base is toast. It is toast with the most. And Ample is... The map is suddenly red. It's just a red map now. I'm almost speechless. Look who's making eight queens. Action says, I can afford this. I can afford to make eight queens, wipe out all these siege tanks, and then just A-move and win. I mean, it's been a lot of Dark Swarm usage, okay? It's not Larva style in that there has been Plague and Dark Swarm even up here on this side of the map. So that's something Action did to make this work out for him, and I'm flabbergasted. I thought for sure Action was dead. And now he's in as good a position as you can ever hope to be in an elite CVT. And there's your supply block. Yeah, and at this stage, honestly, action, he takes the 12 o'clock base. He says, I'm not really in a hurry to kill you. One of the only ways I can lose this game now is by A, moving into your siege tanks and losing everything over and over and over again. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to set up... I'm going to go... I finally going for some drops here at 32 minutes. See, Apple's got his factories back. He's got a third base rolling here too, which is not enough by any stretch. Yeah, just again, making sure the spider minefield is not as uh, comprehensively covering everything as Apple wants it to be here. That's what those links are trying to do. They're not trying to win anything. Oh, a Radiate on the Queens. That's a great play. Ample, again, just trying to buy time to stay alive here. To get up a... Oh, to get up a good number of tanks and crush. Yeah, the Queens are just trying to generate enough energy to go for a spawn broodling, which they are not close to doing. Uh, maybe the ones that got irradiated were drop attempts. It's not a doom drop, but that is a drop attempt. 14 Queens in production? It's 14 queens in production, ladies and gentlemen. The Defilers haven't done anything yet. There we go. Dark Swarm coming at ya. Gets a Plague Rooney down here, too. Couple of the supply depots gonna die, which again, super annoying to someone who just built a bunch of supply depots to avoid getting supply blocked. And I don't know, like, it was okay. It was a fine drop. It was not enough to win the game, obviously, but it's 191 to 120 supply. Oh, is that friendly fire spider mine hit? Killed some SCVs there. It's 80 to 49 workers, by the way. Woo! Yeah, and this is, I don't, I mean, like, Zerg players enjoy this, I guess. We don't see a lot of wins. Okay, so I must have just tossed down one spawn broodling. Oh my gosh. So, this is the most queens I've ever seen in a professional game. Oh, more have joined the party. He's making more queens too. Production tab says more queens. 
Keeps trying to get his spawn ruling off, but he's been irradiated. Well, the queen's been irradiated, and then uh, bad things happen. Man, first game between these two players, and we get some crazy stuff. A little boxer maneuver attempted, but guess who's got burrow? Guess what can't get irradiated? Stuff that's under the ground. Yeah, I mean, this... The base count, the income difference... If Ample wins this, this is getting an epic, 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 epic tag. Although I probably shouldn't say that. Okay, so... Hmm. It's just an amazing reversal. I don't see any way this is gonna end well for the Terran player. He's kind of delaying the inevitable. As far as I can tell. And we got a Brazilian Siege Tanks. That is, without question, the truth. Here come those queens. One, two, three. We got more? It's another one. A little radiate action on that filer running the wrong way. At least try to get a dark swarm up or something. Just a sound you don't hear a lot, man. It's the sound of spawn broodlings. This is this is just messing around, is what this is. From action. He's like, I got this. He's spawn broodling on the Goliaths because they're the biggest enemy to these queens. Ample's trying to move out here, but he's just. Not a very good thumbnail, but by God, that is so many queens! And queens are gross looking. Trying to take care of those science vessels. This right side base in a bit of trouble, actually, for action. That, uh, we don't want that to go down if you're the Zerg player, but 10 Ultras in production. The Goliaths are doing serious amounts of work here. Oh, but the Science Vessel is taking some serious hits there as well. See what I remember said about tanks just setting up and wiping out bases? Yep. That's exactly what happened. Drone's dying, but that just might free up some supply here for action to make more stuff that he wants to make, like things in Ultras. And I don't know. This is not going that well for action. Trying to engage into all these siege tanks over the ground got a lot of supply tied up in queens that can't really do much. I mean, he's got them sorted into groups that can spawn rulings and groups that can't. Oh, these Goliaths are just making themselves incredible targets. There we go. From the fire splash, taking that one out. And then he's got another group down here. These two are ready to go. Well, one of them's ready to go anyway. So much supplies in Queens! <laughs> Just nothing but a silly, silly game at this point. Holy Queens. The most Queens I have ever seen in, a, again, in a professional game that I've ever cast without question. I don't know if that makes a good thumbnail. It is weird there are so many queens. I don't know. Do I do the thumbnail of all the queens all grouped up together like this? But I do the queens with exploding tanks. I mean, you know what the queens are for. I mean, I don't need the tanks, but it's a little more exciting if there's something exploding, right? Wow, that's a lot of dead vultures all of a sudden. And there's your GG. <laughs> what? Uh, what a 
match. What a, I mean, honestly, what a match indeed. I, oh boy, that was a lot of fun. That reversal, man. Again, action was down 70 supply to a making Terran a player. And then just Ling's Ultras, Dark Swarm, Plague. He wipes out the natural in the main. The 12 o'clock base, the mineral, the mineral base just outside of the main base. And then just, that was it. That was it. Crazy, crazy 40 minute game, man. And then he's like, I don't want to use Lings and Ultras to crack this. We're just going to queen our way through it. We're going to kill as many of these tanks as we can. And Goliaths keep getting in the way, so we'll kill those too. That makes a lot of sense. Fantastic. I don't even don't even know what else to say. That was an amazing game from action. Maybe the best game I've ever cast of his. Not even kidding. <sighs> All right, end of the day. 373,000 points for action. 329,000 points for Ample. Ends up producing 1,300 Zerg units to 800 Terran units. Actually, not bad from Ample, all things considered. Kill death ratio, you know, not great for the Zerg, but, you know, when you make 1,000 units, you can get away with some certain stuff. Raise so many Terran buildings. And then resources, yeah, especially for the last 10 minutes of the game where he was on like 12 bases and the Terran was on two or three. Uh, way more gas mined, way more minerals mined, and way more spent. Just being everywhere helps a lot. Obviously, action got a lot of good stuff done simply by being everywhere, right? <sighs> Just attacking multiple places at once, getting Dark Swarm up, getting Plague up, forcing the Terran to respond in micro in all, like, six different places at the same time. Not something he wants to do, and then suddenly there's a Dark Swarm on your ramp, and that is the beginning of Doom, is when all your tanks coming out of your factories are dying, your factories start dying, and then your main dies. It's so hard to come back from that. Protoss can come back from that against a Terran player who wipes out their main base, but I don't know. I don't know that Terran is built to be able to pull that off against a Zerg player, especially. So good stuff. All right. That right there is going to be it from me. This is Ben Falcon Paladin coming at you with a gosh darn 40 minute ZVT on Circuit Breakers with one of the most amazing comebacks you've ever seen. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.